So this AR in front of you here may look familiar. If you follow the channel enough, this is my 11.5 inch gun. It's an air pistol. Technically, it's a complete BCM BFH upper receiver with the uh, MCMR 10 inch rail. M-lock, of course, from BCM. Again, complete upper receiver from BCM. Uh, built mega lower. Got a couple of other accessories on here like my Arasaka 600 series light, um, black multicam on this, the grips and stuff by Weepley the second. Check them out. They did the Cut on that stuff. Um, got a cloud defensive light control system up here with my Surefire ST01 or 7. I always forget what it is on that. And um, and bus sites and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to do a little uh, update on this guy with something pretty darn new. I wanted to show it to you here. So this is the cloud defensive core. This one happens to be the V1. It for, stands for cloud optimized rail. This is a direct replacement for the existing BCM, uh, MCMR, KMR type rails. It utilizes the standard BCM barrel nut. We'll talk about that here more in a minute. And I just kind of want to show it to you guys. This is a pretty darn cool and I would say very purpose driven rail. You see that notch kind of drops down in the front. And you're probably saying, what the heck is that for? Well, we'll switch to the bench here. We'll talk about that here right now. So before we get too crazy here, I'll make a couple notes. One, Cloud Defensive did send this to me for testing and review. Uh, not all the stuff you see from Cloud, um, and I would say a large majority of the stuff you see on the channel, I usually buy myself and is not sent to me, but this one is. I just want to make you guys aware of that. So I will put links and stuff down below if I can. There's not much I can link to on these video descriptions and stuff anymore, given the... Uh, the YouTube policy and stuff, but check out uh, our Facebook page. We'll link that stuff there and check out, uh, just do like a Google search for the Cloud Defensive uh, Core COR. You'll find it pretty easily. Um, also, there are two versions of this. This is the V1. This has your little cutout or your lower notch section of your Picatinny rail a little bit further up than the V2. The V2 is kind of more back here. Uh, so again, check those out. There's differences in between what uh, light switches and stuff they're designed for uh, and how you know those are kind of designed they are a, again they're a very purpose-driven rail system so if you're not utilizing one of those uh, types of uh, mounting options or light mounting options that are listed on the the cloud defensive page it may not necessarily be the rail for you but if you are it's going to be pretty slick and i've actually seen guys mount like the uh the the pec lasers up here and stuff like that too kind of lowers it down uh gives you a little bit lower um uh bore closer to the bore probably a little bit easier to zero uh, and then also you've got the little bit less uh, in your line of sight protruding your your field of view and stuff like that. So that's kind of the draw to something like this. So the big question is, why is this notched out? Uh, typically, and I should say specifically for the cloud defensive light control system mounts, as well as their new light, the cloud defensive OWL, um, also the OWL, whatever you want to call it, that stands for optimized weapon light. And that is a pretty slick light as well. Got one of those on order, actually got in on the pre-order, and I had to pick the black Molsey cam, of course. So uh, I know some of you guys have been asking about the OWL. Yes, I'm getting one, should be here in a few weeks. Uh, that process to do the coating just obviously takes a bit longer, so that's why I don't have it yet. But you guys will see it mounted up on this thing here in the near future. So this is the uh, the first iteration, to the best of my knowledge. They cut, This is 9.55 inches long. So designed more for your like 10.3 to 10.5 inch barrels. Um, you can easily use this on an 11.5, which is what I'm doing. Um, but I did see that Cloud had noted they're going to be releasing a 10 and a half inch version of this, which will be great for an 11 and a half inch barrel. Um, see if I can grab one of those too, because again, I do have an 11 and a half. And they're also gonna be doing a 13 inch, I believe, which would be again, awesome for your like 14 and a half to 16 inch plus barrels. So it's kind of an all around good sizing option there. So. Um, again, very purpose-driven rail. Check them out online. If you got any questions, let me know. Let's do the install real quick here. Won't show you too much of that stuff because, again, I don't want to violate the YouTube policy. Um, but, yeah, let's get her done. Couple quick notes on these while I have them off, and before I do the assembly, you will note that the BCM MCMR10 again is a hair longer than the current earliest release version of the core version here, Core V1. Uh, core V1 and V2 are the same length, just again, just difference in where this is positioned. So 
Uh, this is, again, better suited, in my opinion, a bit for a 10.3 to 10.5 inch barrel, but again, it should be fine. It's, it's gonna be a bit of personal preference uh, from user to user, depending on what type of um, rail length you like for your barrel length. Again, mine is a 11 and a half, so should be pretty, pretty fun to play with this. Uh, these two are about the same weights, um, despite the fact that this one is shorter. So with that said, this one is a little bit beefier actually. So put this one down here and show you the BCM. Um, the core is a bit beefier, which I'm not complaining about. Um, I like having a little bit stronger rail. I mean, I think even with the latest releases of the, uh, the BCM, you know, not, I'm not talking about the early uh, magnesium versions, but even the latest releases of these BCM handguards is, I think the only complaints I've seen is that the uh, guys wish they were a little bit tougher and they're not a bad rail at all. And the lockup is awesome, but I think most guys I've seen wish they were a bit tougher. tougher. So I'm not complaining that this, they're using, seem to be using a bit thicker aluminum on this stuff. So let's see how this guy fits on. Got the, uh, that indexing piece or alignment piece transferred over. Nice, I like it. It's um, it's pretty snug. It's not uh, it's not loose, but it's it's pretty snug. But it was easy enough to get on, which I like. My biggest complaint with these uh, BCM rails is that they make them absurdly tight sometimes, and it's kind of hit and miss depending on which one you get. But um, these can be absurdly uh, tight to get on. You have to get a mallet out to get them on or off. In fact, to remove this one right here. Um, I had to get a mallet out to even get this one off. So I like that they're snug, but there's pros and cons to that too. So um, I like something that fits snug, but you don't have to get like the Gorilla tools out. If you know what I mean. And retightening this to 30 to 40 inch pounds. I like the air on the side of being a bit heavier. Going to 40. There you go. And there we have it. All done. Looks pretty slick. I dig it. As you can tell, the light control system with that Surefire tape switch fits in there perfect. I can still use my early exit there for that cable because I'm pushing the light relatively far forward in relation to the switch itself. Um, I do want to exit early to get that cable, which is nice about these, uh, these light control systems here. So um, fits in there perfect. Nice little fit. Uh, I'm far forward as I can go right now. And as you can tell, looking at it from the side, we basically got like, um, it's basically at flush with the top of what your normal rail would be. So instead of adding bulk and adding to the top of the rail, which with this setup here, isn't a huge deal because the um, the uh, the Surefire tape switches are pretty slim, but the Streamlight ones, they're kind of bulky, uh, which is where the uh, V2 comes in, to the best of my knowledge. So if you run in uh, Streamlight stuff and you, you want a, a you know, good tape switch option like this, give them a look. So that's more of a, more setup for the the, sure, the streamlights, I believe. This one's more of a Surefire setup here. So uh, I like it, it's awesome. It feels super, super slim. Look at that, it's like right at the top of that rail. So you come over the top and it's not like you have something on the top of your rail. It's almost like it's basically integrated into your rail system. So uh, again, very purpose built. If you're not running a light setup like this or plan to run the OWL, OWL, or uh, you know one of those uh, streamlight options we talked about, or um, you don't have some type of like laser system that you do want to mount a little bit lower. Again, I've seen guys do that, which would be nice. Uh, this may not be for you. Um, these go for, I think it was two oh nine ninety nine. If I'm wrong, I'll roll it in here. So they're pretty awesome uh, for what they are. Uh, but again, probably not for everybody. Again, they're very purpose built. So if you need like the best option, uh, every advantage you can get, this is probably something for you here. So I dig it. There are built-in QD sling mounts here. And that's something you can't say about the BCM MCMR. Bring it in here. I was using a quick detach uh, screw on on this one here because again, they're not built in, uh, but they are built in on the cloud. So that's another cool thing. And last but not least on the V1, you'll notice that 
there isn't a rail section up here and there's not enough rail even if there was to mount say a front sight post so a lot of guys kind of get irked i guess i could say about your front sight being that far back because you are reducing your sight radius uh, but at the end of the day you got to just keep in mind uh, for most people including me these are backup iron sights um, how often i use these is really just comes down to leisure for the most part um, I have a quality optics and I don't really have to worry about utilizing backups. They're there for that very reason, backups and backups only. So um, even uh, when they do need to come down and be used, uh, I think a lot of people kind of over exaggerate the, the, this idea of this long sight radius. Um, but again, just keep that in mind, something that you may want to consider, but for me, non-issue for the most part. So if you guys got anything else, let me know, put everything down below that I can, and I will do another update when I get the cloud defensive owl because that's what I'm really excited about. And that's what's gonna go on here. It's gonna replace this setup here. Uh, but because I got this now, and I gotta wait a couple weeks for the owl, I wanted to show this to you as we sit here. So, check you guys later. Kinda of screwing around here in the garage with this thing now that I got it all done. Don't mind the mess, but um, yes, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's funny how much of a difference that can make. It just feels so much more slimline. You don't have, it feels less like the rail's less chunky with everything mounted up, so. I dig it, pretty slick. Manual strobe.